Hello friends, this video on adolescence part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we got to know the various changes that take place during adolescence, both in males as well as female. Now since we are talking about menstrual cycle, we are talking about pregnancy. So another interesting question that might arise in your mind is, let us suppose that a woman is pregnant. Now when she is pregnant, just by looking at her, we get to know that okay, she is carrying a baby in her womb. Now, how do you know whether that baby is going to be a baby girl or a baby boy? In fact, first of, first of all, we will not know as such. The second thing is, even if it is a baby boy or a baby girl, how do we know? I mean, what decides that it is going to be a girl or a boy? What decides the sex of the child? So that is going to be something very interesting. So let us try to understand that what happens exactly inside because now how a woman gets pregnant that is clear to us that happens when the sperm is able to fertilize the egg within 24 hours of ovulation that is when a woman can become pregnant now the question is during this process of fertilization what is that special thing which decides that the child is going to be a baby boy or a baby girl so let us talk about sex determination. What determines the sex of the child? Now, there are chances, in fact, there is a 50-50 chance that the baby can be a boy or the baby can be a girl. But what exactly decides that? In order to understand that, we will have to understand a few concepts before that. So first of all, we have to be clear about the concept of human chromosomes. Now, all of us have learned about cells right that our body is made up of several cells human beings are multicellular organism so body is made up of many cells now we have also studied about the structure of each cell so inside each cell we have a nucleus so body is made up of cell inside the cell we have a nucleus so you see this is the nucleus if you magnify this nucleus inside the nucleus we have thread like structures which are called chromatin in fact these chromatin condense to form rod like structures called chromosomes so these are chromosomes and why chromosomes are important because they play a very important role during the process of cell division that is when cell form new cells. Now why chromosome is important because chromosomes contain genes and genes contain nothing but DNA and DNA is the genetic material. So the information for inheritance like the traits you would have seen that many of us resemble our parents. Maybe you resemble your father or you resemble your mother. So how that resemblance come? Because the characters get passed on from one generation to the next generation. How it gets passed on? Through genes and these genes are present in the chromosomes. So basically chromosomes are responsible for passing traits from one generation to the next generation. So they are extremely important. In your higher classes when you learn about genetics then you will see that how important chromosomes are. So for now I will not get into all those details. What I want to explain you is every human cell contain 46 chromosomes so this number is fixed so all the cells in our body contain 46 chromosomes the only exception is the gametes that is the sex cells so every body i mean if, if it is a male it will have it will produce male gametes if it is a female then it will produce female gamete what is a male gamete sperm and what is a female gamete ovum so sperm and ovum they contain half the number of chromosomes that is 23 chromosomes so what does it mean? It means that inside our body, all the cells, all the body cells will contain 46 chromosomes and these chromosomes exist in pairs. So there will be total 23 pairs of chromosomes inside each and every cell. The only exception is the sex cells or the gametes which are specialized cells with half the number of chromosomes when compared to the body cells. Right? So uh, please understand this very clearly. Now why the gametes have half the number of chromosomes? That's because if you look at the process of fertilization. Now during fertilization what happens? The father releases the sperm 
and the mother releases the ovum or the egg cell and these two fuse together to form a single cell called zygote and this zygote will undergo repeated division to form the embryo and the embryo later will form the fetus and the fetus will form the baby. So that is how the process of reproduction takes place. Now as I said, each and every cell of our body has 46 chromosomes, but sperm and ovum has only 23. So this has 23 chromosomes, this has 23 chromosomes. When they both combine, then zygote has 46 chromosomes. And this zygote will undergo multi multiple repeated division to form the embryo. So basically, it reached the same number because the zygote is just any other body cell. So it should have 46 chromosomes. So that is why sperm and ovum has half the number of chromosomes so that when they combine together, they give rise to a cell with 46 chromosomes. So this is clear, right? So now let us see what are those 46 chromosomes. So those 46 chromosomes look somewhat like this. So here I have shown it in pairs. So you see everywhere it is a pair. So total number of chromosome is 46. That means there exists a total of 23 pairs. Now out of these 23 pairs, 22 pairs are same in male and female. Whether it is a male or a female, 22 pairs will remain the same. And these 22 pairs are called as autosomes because they are the same in male and female. So here you see from pair number 1 to pair number 22. So they are the same. So here you can see from pair number 1 to pair number 22. They are all autosomes. And what about the 23rd pair? So 23rd pair is the sex chromosome which is different in male and female. So if it is a male, so this is the sex chromosome. And why it is called sex chromosome? Because this chromosome determines the sex of the person. Now if it is a male, in case of a male, this sex chromosome is going to be XY, that is the two chromosomes because all the chromosomes you can see they exist in pairs. So two of them exist together. So if it is a male, the sex chromosomes both are different from each other. One is X, one is Y. So one is longer, the other one is shorter. And if it is a female, in case of a female, both of them are identical which is denoted as XX. Correct? So if it is a male, it is going to be XY. If it is female, it is going to be XX. So this is how the 23rd chromosome, which is also called the sex chromosome, is in case of male and female. So if you talk about a person who is a boy or a male or a man, so in, in that person, each cell of his body will have total 46 chromosomes out of which 22 pairs will be same as females but the last pair that is the sex chromosome will be XY in all the cells of his body. Similarly in case of females in all the cells of her body the sex chromosome will be XX so that is the difference between male and female. So this sex chromosome determines what will be the gender of that person. That person will be a male or a female and this sex chromosome also determines the baby which is going to be born to a couple. So let us see how that happens. Now females as I said they have a perfect pair of sex chromosome that is XX perfect pair because both are identical. So XX will be for females. Now for males they have mismatched pair of sex chromosome because both are not identical. That is XY. So you see XY is shorter than X. So that is why they have XY. Now during the formation of sperms. Now these chromosomes are present in every cell, right? In each cell of the body there are 46 chromosomes. But this man is going to release the sperm and what did I say? Sperm has only 23 chromosomes. That is half the number of chromosomes. So inside the sperm the sex chromosome that is the last pair, the 23rd pair will also not exist as a pair. So one of these will exist, either X will exist or Y will exist. So the sperm can contain either the X chromosome or the Y chromosome, both of them will not exist. Like try to understand this, like every cell has 46 chromosome. So when 46 chromosome exists, then it exists like this in pairs and total 23 pairs will exist like this. 
Now, when I talk about a sperm or an ovum, it has 23 chromosomes. That means the two pairs will not exist. Only one one will exist from each pair. So that is how only 23 will exist. Clear? So now if only one exists of the pair, so the last pair that is the sex chromosome has two different X or Y. So either X will be present in the sperm or Y will be present in the sperm. But in case of female, the female will release the ovum or the egg cell. So this also has 23 total chromosomes. So therefore the sex chromosome can also have only one out of these two but both are X. So it is quite obvious that female will always contribute X in its egg cell. Correct? So now during fusion what will happen? The sperm will fuse with the ovum. Now the sperm can be X or the sperm can also have Y but the ovum will always be X. So therefore, this is your ovum. So the sex chromosome inside the ovum will always be X. But the sperm can be X, sperm can be Y as well. So if, so if this X combines, this sperm has X, in that case this and this will combine together to form XX. And XX is a girl. So a girl will be born. But if the sperm which fuses the or which fertilizes the egg if it contains Y in that case it will be XY so a boy will be born. So that means it is the sperm which decides whether a girl will be born or a boy will be born. So basically the father decides the sex of the child. So this is how sex is determined. This is how it is determined whether the baby will be a baby boy or a baby girl. So I hope this concept is clear to you. See, this is a very important concept. Now these terms are new to you, so it might be a little confusing. But please go through it over and again. First, try to understand what are chromosomes. Now every cell inside our body will have 46 chromosomes. Only exception is sperm and ovum. So now sperm contains only half the chromosome that is 23. So all the pair of chromosome will get halved. Only one of the two will be present in the sperm. Now since the sex chromosome will have, has two different chromosomes. One is X, one is Y. So it is possible that the sperm contains X. It is also possible that the sperm contains Y. So there are two different possibilities. But in case of female, the sex chromosome contains both identical chromosomes. So it is very obvious that the ovum will contain X. Now there is one possibility where the sperm containing X can fuse with the ovum. There is another possibility where the sperm is Y and it fuses with the ovum. So depending upon whether the sperm contains X chromosome or Y chromosome, the sex of the child is determined. So now if I ask you who decides the sex of the child, is it the mother or the father? Yes, of course, it is the father who decides the sex of the child. Now in India, it has often been seen that in remote areas, people want that a boy should be born because they feel that boys are better than girls. That's how it, this thought is still there in some of the remote areas of our country. And it, it has often been observed that if a girl is born, people often start blaming the mother who gave birth to the boy to the girl and they say that okay it is because of her that a girl is born but a mother is never responsible for the gender of the child it, it all depends upon the father so father is the one who decides whether the child will be a boy or a girl thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.